All right guys, so behind me, I've got a bunch of doors, really large house here. I'm changing out all the door slabs. Um, I've done about 29 doors so far, I think, and I've got four more left to go. Now, all of these other doors, I replaced the slabs and mortised my hinges using a high-end contractor grade kit. This was a Bosch kit. But I asked on Instagram, what is the best hinge router template and I got a lot of different responses, but a lot of guys actually mentioned this Ryobi kit, said it was decent, so I went ahead and ordered one, and on these last four doors, I'm gonna use this jig and see what it's all about. So a couple real quick things about this jig. With the kit, it does come with a half inch router bit with guide bearing on here, that's what you need. This is a jig designed for a flush application. So you're not gonna use a guide bushing or an offset bearing to route this. It's an exact size of the hinge. That's the style template. This jig does come equipped to do a 5 8 inch radius hinge, which is what I'm doing on this house, and what I have here, or a quarter inch radius hinge. Because the bit they send is a half inch, Whenever you want to use a quarter inch radius hinge, all you've got to do is pop out these little gray plastic inserts on the inside. And whenever you want to use a 5 8 inch radius hinge, these have a 5 8 of an inch radius on them. You're just going to pop those right onto the jig and that's then set up for 5 8 inch radius. So I knew whenever I ordered this jig, there was one thing I knew I was gonna have to watch out for, and that was the position of where the hinge is mortised onto the door. If you're replacing old door slabs with new slabs <clears throat> like I am here, it's very important that you check the old door to make sure that it's gonna line up correctly before you start mortising. So why is that important? It's important because if you do not have this positioned correctly in this orientation and your hinge is not mortised far enough down, your door will actually bind on the door stop whenever you try to close it and it'll want to pop open or it just flat out won't work. If I would have just went to town with this jig set up as it is, I would have had a big problem. Thankfully, these little strips are able to be peeled off. So I just peeled them off and put them over here. And then I checked it again and now it's lined up perfectly and I should be able to use this just fine with no issues. Now the way you mount this jig, it's really simple. It's just got a screw here. And as you screw this in, this piece moves in and it clamps to the door. So I can just set it on here and tighten this down where my hinge is gonna go, make sure it's pressed firmly in place where it needs to be. Now, the other thing I noticed about this, as you tighten this, it will actually kind of continue to pull the jig up. So if you tighten it super hard one time, and then not as tight the next time, your hinge will actually not be in the exact same place as you move down the line mortising your hinges. So make note as you set this on your old door and get it exactly where it needs to be so that everything lines up, notice how firmly you're tightening this down and try to stick with that as you mortise your hinges. Now I've got the router bit that they provide chucked up in my cordless router here. Again, it's a half inch bit with a flush bearing on top of that. You could use any router and bit that's a half inch with a flush bearing. It's interesting on the jig, they've actually got two depth stops uh, made into the jig. And this one on the side, you won't be able to read it, but here it says thin hinge. And on this side, it says thick hinge. And for thin hinge, they're saying that's gonna be any hinge between three inches and four inches. And over here, a thick hinge is gonna be between four and a half and five inches. So it's a little bit deeper over here. 
So all we want to do with our bit in the router is drop it into place and then you can just loosen your router and adjust it up and down to get your correct depth. Now, I don't necessarily trust that. Obviously, I've never used it before. I haven't even mortised one hinge with this yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on my old door that's already got the hinges mortised on the old door and take my router and I'm gonna go ahead and set the depth to this old door hinge depth. Now this looks pretty good actually the way it is. It might be just a fuzz too deep. So what I'm actually gonna do on my old door, I've got it set now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and see it. I want it to just lightly shave a tiny, tiny bit of wood and just be skimming the surface of that old mortise. That's actually really good. I'd say I was just lightly taking a little bit of the old stain off. So we're gonna go with that to start mortising our new doors. One thing I can see already right away is I've got my hinge leaf here. And normally with my other professional grade template, I've got it set. So it's about a 30 second over the hinge size. And that's gonna give you room for any paint buildup and just a little bit of wiggle room for adjustment. But this Ryobi template here is about a 16th oversized what my hinge is. So it's probably a little bit more sloppy than I'd like, but we'll see how it turns out. I've got my pencil marks here. Oops. Make sure that you've got the radius on the right side. And then since this is a flush template, it's really easy to line up the inside edge with my pencil marks. That looks great right there. Again, I'm just gonna try and lightly tighten it down just so it, it doesn't move, but I don't wanna tighten it too much. Put your bit in here where it's not hitting anything. Turn it on. I would definitely say it does a great job uh, just in the sense of lining up with the marks. It's really easy to line it up in that regard. See how it fits. That's actually a really nice fit. That is not nearly as sloppy as what I thought it was going to be. It's actually doesn't have much slop at all. Depth looks good. So I think we're going to be pretty good to go right there with that. You know, one other random note with this template, because it clamps on, you don't end up with the nail holes. Whereas with a template like this, you have to pound in these nails and you end up with two holes, uh, which isn't the end of the world whenever something's unpainted. But if this was a finished door, this jig would definitely have an advantage in that it can be clamped on. After doing this hinge, I did just go over to my other door and I double checked everything to make sure that it's lining up exactly. This dimension right here is very crucial because my door stop is gonna be right here whenever this door is closed. So definitely something you wanna watch out for. I just checked again. This is a strong 3 sixteenths and that matches exactly to my old doors. So this should go in the opening and swing just fine. So first impression here, how is the fit? The radius, I would say, matches very well. Whenever it's pushed up tight to one side, you can see that's perfect. There is a little bit of play, about a 32nd of an inch, which is what you want, because whenever they spray these with paint and whatnot, that'll get built up, 
and just a little bit of leeway is actually nice um, for reattaching hinges and whatnot. So I'd call that pretty much a perfect fit right there. You can see I'm pushing all the way up against this side. I've got about 132nd here, so it's probably about what we want. The way Ryobi has this set up out of the box with these strips on the inside, it actually would have been too much offset, so the door would have been too far away from my doorstop, um, which would have left kind of a little bit too much of a gap, an extra 16th of an inch of a gap between the door and my doorstop. And you don't want that to be tight, tight, but you don't want it to be too much either. I mean, you don't want it to be pinching, but you don't want it to be too far off that doorstop. And that makes sense because this jig is probably geared more towards a homeowner and Ryobi shouldn't send that out set up out of the box to kind of screw over a homeowner that probably doesn't know what they're looking for with that offset and have a bunch of home, homeowners with doors pinching. So they actually went too far the other way, I would say. Had I went with this jig right out of the, right out of the box, it would have been taking too much off here, which would have pushed my door off of the doorstop more than what I needed. So I guess the important thing is just look at the door slabs that you're taking off Look at what your existing margins are that you have set up. Make sure your door thickness is the same and then match those margins and your door should work just fine.